It says starting. <laughs> I see a live button. Okay. Well, then it must have started. I didn't get the little ding. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Hello, everybody. Uh, Dave Foster here, and uh, welcome to the very first uh, Geeks and Gear episode. We're going to be interviewing some different geeks about the uh, gadgets that they carry around, and uh, I'm actually going to be working on my uh, internet connection. I've got wireless here in my studio, and I'm going to and I have it wired, so if there's a little bit of, of delay and everything, I apologize, but they will get better. Uh, but today, I actually have one of my favorite geeks uh, on the internet, uh, Callie Lewis, uh, <laughs> from Geek Beat TV. So welcome, Callie. The tables have turned. <laughs> In, indeed, they have. <laughs> Usually, I'm the one interviewing people. <laughs> well, and... You know, a lot of people do know who you are, but there are some people out there, and, and I know that I invited some people uh, on my list and stuff to this that may not know who you are. So, uh, the the one that I, question that I want to start off with is just kind of you telling everybody who you are and why and how you started Geek Beat. Uh, so I host and uh, co-founded the uh, Geek Beat show. It's uh, we're we're really all about a geek lifestyle. So we talk about anything geeky. It can be gadgets, it could be cars, it could be uh, hacking a motor onto a kayak. Why not? <laughs> you know, anything um, fun and geeky that, that you can uh, get involved with. So we have a wide range of topics that we, that we talk about um, and we release shows five days a week uh, and do a lot of other coverage on the blog and other videos, reviews, those kinds of things. So, um, and why? Why? Because what's better to talk about than tech and geekiness? <laughs> That's all I have to say. <laughs> you know, I, I just do want to say exactly. this uh, whole geeks and uh, this whole geeks and uh, gear show. Uh, that we're kind of launching is a great idea. I think it's going to be very um, fun to be able to get to know all the geeks out there and uh, get to know them on a more personal level. So, great idea, David, and I'm looking forward to seeing what you uh, what you produce on that end. Well, thank you, and, and thank you very much. And yeah, and to have uh, you know, I I think it's interesting because no matter. When I was posting uh, in the social media space on our blog, it always seemed like whether we were doing podcasts or videos, a lot of people liked the training, but we always got questions about what devices were we using, what kind of tech were we yeah. using. So you know that it always was very popular. So you know, I'm I'm very happy to be part of this community and and love what you guys do. So let's yes. get right to the meat. Uh, what are the th three gadgets that you cannot do without on a daily basis? You're coming out with the hard-hitting questions right away. All right, <laughs> so obviously my phone, um, <laughs> that doesn't go anywhere. I, I can't put it down, I, I just can't. And I carry the uh, Galaxy Note 3. So, um, and I, the reason I cho chose that phone is because of the stylus. I love to write as opposed to just type. Um, and if you've known me for a while, you know I love my to-do lists, <laughs> and uh, I, I finally moved away last year. Actually, when I got the Note 2, um, I finally moved away from handwriting my to-do lists and just doing them you know, with the S Pen or on Evernote, but that really helped that transition. Uh, so there's that. Uh, everywhere I go, also my, my computer and my Tilt Energy bag go with me. Um, unless I'm going like to the gym, those don't go there. But that's about it. <laughs> and uh, the Tilt Energy bag, I'm I, I keep looking at it, sitting right here beside me. See, it doesn't go very far. Uh, it has a battery in it, and you so you can charge your gadgets wherever you are at any time. And then the third thing, uh, typically I have a fitness tracker of some sort on me at all times. So right now I'm actually wearing two, uh, and I have a bazillion of them. <laughs> <laughs> so okay, so you you said you wear a fitness tracker all the time. Now I know you're just now getting ready to start this uh, workout regimen uh, with Todd and Jeff. 
are those going to play a big part in that process, or, or like are these new gadgets, or are these things that you've had all along? Uh, these are things that I, I typically use just during my own training, but yeah, the uh, Get Fit program that we're beginning to do starting today is, uh, I'll be I'll actually be tracking it a little heavier than I have in the past. Um, I will wear more of them and log them so that I can share those results with people. You know, um, what what's kind of more accurate? What what you know, uh, and just kind of compare it all and and help people decide what they would like to choose. Mm -hmm. So so now this is a a tough question because I personally I have a problem with this. Um, um, and I and I know many people do in, in my circles, but do you ever just lay down all your gadgets and, and completely unplug? And if so, how long can you go before you start uh, feeling some withdrawal? <laughs> um, <laughs> not very long and not very often. Um, <laughs> so I can't even make it through an entire movie without needing to pick up my phone. Even literally, I noticed this the other time, the last time I, I watched a movie, which was like a week ago. I I just have to pick it up at some point during the movie. I have to look at it or just check the time or something. I don't even necessarily have to do email or look at Twitter or something. I just have to pick it up and physically hold it. <laughs> how how bad is that? Okay. <laughs> now, there have been times Okay, so so then let's take that question a step further. It sounds like you're that attached. You don't I, I was just going to say you don't sleep with it under your pillow, correct? <laughs> Um, <laughs> sleep with it right beside me on the bed. <laughs> I mean, not on the bed, like on the uh, desktop, on the uh, you know little bedside table. But yeah, it's it's very close <laughs> at all times. Now, I, um, there there are very few times when I will be you know kind of so burnt out that I just need to get away. But it's it's so rare. It's only happened a couple of times in my life I, that I can think of. Uh, even when I go on vacation or you know, or traveling, I'm still taking pictures and still sharing the adventures that I go through because I'm very lucky to have kind of an amazing life. You know, I get to go and do fun stuff. And so one of the joys of doing that stuff is to share it with the world and, and all the uh, entire geeky community, and so you know I can't put it down because I'm showing you Hawaii or Japan or whatever. <laughs> yeah, so that that just shows right there. You don't do it for you; you do it for us. Yeah, my problem <laughs> is all because of you. <laughs> I think that's what uh, we figured out here, right? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So okay, so when you do unplug, I mean, what? Are the things and you kind of already mentioned that, but um, what makes you want to unplug? I know that for me, I'll get like you know, I'll go through this long span of staying connected, and then one day I'll just be like, you know what, I'm taking a day completely away. I'll set everything aside and I'll just go outside and enjoy nature without you know maybe just my camera or whatever. But what you know, do you get to those those times where you're kind of frustrated and you need that extra time? Just every once in a while, um, and. And, and and it is kind of I'll, I'll give you a perfect example when I go stand up paddle boarding that I can't actually take my phone with me um, because I'm literally standing on the water pretty much <laughs> so uh, those are the times when I you know if if I need to it's kind of my breather it's my restoration time uh, you know, and everybody needs that. Uh, we we don't all need to be connected 24/7, even though we all are and love it every yeah. minute of it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Give us the top five songs or artists that are on your playlist. Oh well, that changes. I'm opening up Spotify here. Hold on, uh, that changes from time to time. Um, but I love singer-songwriter kind of artists. Um, like uh, you know, Sarah Hayes is great. Um, the Fray is probably my favorite band. They're not singer songwriter. Um, uh, I listen to a lot of classical as well uh, while I'm working. But so there are two types of music I listen to: kind of uh, more upbeat, like singer songwriter stuff. Uh, but it also allows me to kind of concentrate. You don't have to think about what the words are saying, or the music's not mm -hmm. like so 
head banger that you can't even concentrate. Um, and then classical, if I'm really trying to focus on a project and get a lot of work done in a very short span of time, I'll do classical, uh, which is a lot. <laughs> uh, I love Lord. Uh, they're great. They're great. Not, <laughs> you know, <laughs> Lord L O R D E. <laughs> you know that band? <laughs> um, yep, yep. That was just funny. Your laugh. Uh, let's see. The Good Mad. I, a lot of people don't know about them. Uh, they're kind of folksy, which a lot of people don't get. But and I don't do folk music, but for some reason the Good Mad does it for me. And uh, let's see. I'm just looking. Colby Calais, great artist. Paolo Nutini is mm -hmm. one of my favorites. He does some fun songs. Anyway, that's a little peek. <laughs> well, and that, yeah, and I'm, the, I'm kind of the same way with uh, when I'm working or if I really have to concentrate, I'm either classical or like, uh, like an RJD2, something that doesn't have lyrics but is kind of like chilled out so that doesn't like, you know, make my brain thump, but I still don't yeah. have to focus on the words, so... I think right. that's probably typical for a lot of people. Now, I do know some people I hear talk, you know, they listen to like heavy metal while they work and stuff, and I just, I don't think, I, I just want to break my screen or something if I did that. <laughs> I don't care if I'm working or not. I hear heavy metal, I want to break everything in sight. <laughs> yeah. Or just go to an insane asylum. I used to have friends that would go like mosh in mosh pits and stuff, and I just never got that. <laughs> I, I personally can't do it. I don't blame anybody else for loving what they love, though. <laughs> exactly. Judge not. So, but yeah. Um, so, are there any gadgets coming out in the near future that you are excited about, and that you could see maybe replacing any of your current gadgets? I'm I'm looking forward to the wearables market. Uh, you know, I wearables right now suck. I mean, I'm not saying any particular gadgets out there suck. I but wearables as a market is nowhere where it needs to be. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to having that market grow and, and be able to use them and integrate them um, and then also have wearables connect to you know automated lifestyle processes um, and technologies. So those two things, I can't wait to actually <laughs> for somebody to get it right. <laughs> Well, and I've been like, you know, I, would, I really resisted the wearables. Like, like Google Glass, I just, I cannot see, I just cannot make myself like them, that technology just yet. But I did actually get a Pebble watch uh, and enjoy that because getting my text messages or whatever, I don't have to be rude and pull out my phone like John B. was yeah. talking about. I can kind of <laughs> peek over at my watch and look like I'm just looking at the time well, or whatever. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, I, I do, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say with, with like the Pebble, John P. loves his Pebble Steel as well, and it, it's a little too big for, for me because my wrist is tiny. But um, it, it, there's there's an interesting thing happening with uh, watches, with smart watches, because I'll notice when we go into a meeting, for instance, uh, you know, John may get a, a text message or a call or whatever, and he'll look down at his watch and... <laughs> It, it there. If you're not with geeky people, that can actually kind of have a negative effect. And, and this isn't anything bad about the pebble by any means. It's a, it's a, it's a fact of just people getting used to this new environment, right? Um, but you know, imagine somebody looking down at their watch. I'm like, oh, okay, I really want to get out of here. <laughs> um, the, the that whole smartwatch thing is is. People are having to get used to it for sure, so uh, it'll it's kind of funny to watch non geeks around it because they have no idea.
Hey. Hey. I missed you, David. <laughs> yeah, isn't that just great for the, the guy that's asking you questions just to ditch you right in the middle of the show? <laughs> I was just going to start asking myself questions, you know, do this whole thing and answer myself. <laughs> and people might start to think I'm a little weird, but <laughs> you know what? The first things of everything, the first, you know, shows of anything you start always going to be like this. So we got it out of the way. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so now it's going to be smooth sailing. We hope. So, uh, you, what did uh, what did I miss? <laughs> I, I was just talking. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Well, then I was just getting ready. That that was the last question. And I'm getting ready to ask uh, user submitted questions. So oh, okay. um, it won't let me open the Q and A, but I but I wrote them down here. So I'm gonna. Uh, Paul Dixon wanted to know: Has Callie ever had? Any gadget disasters? Uh, bet she has, because uh, who hasn't? Uh, E.g., lost, dropped, or destroyed a gadget. Always. <laughs> I, I am hard on my gadgets. Uh, the most recent, funniest one was, uh, you know, Samsung sent me the. Uh, I think it was the Note Three. I I was trading in my my Note Two to the Note Three. I got the Note Three. Within the first like 24 hours. I dropped it. It didn't have a case on it or anything. Bam! Cracked the entire screen. <laughs> it was bad, and so I had to uh, get that replaced. But yeah, that that was that was probably the worst because I was so excited to get the Note Three, and then bam! But it was dead of winter, and I had this big coat on, and I had gloves on, and I was trying to put it in my pocket, and I just missed, so I couldn't feel it essentially. Yep. I remember one time I was talking to a, a friend and I was talking about how I and I had an iPhone at the time. I was like, I have never once dropped my device and no sooner than I said that I f started fumbling it and I
Okay. All I'm, right, I'm you back? Audio only. Oh, okay. I am. <laughs> All right. Do you so want to go you... out and try it back for video, or is it just not going to? No, I'll just leave it audio. That way I don't get kicked off again for, for okay. a minute. Since yeah. I, I just got a couple more questions. Okay. Okay, so did you answer the one that I just had? Which one was that? Did you did you, I just had text you a, a question, but I, I guess you didn't get it. So. Oh. oh, sorry, I didn't see that. It's okay. So I can ask you now. What? What? Uh, what do you do with old gadgets? Are there any that um, can't bear to part with, though they are no longer of any use? Like, do you have some drawer full of devices that you just cannot get rid of? Yeah, yeah. Well, um, there are a few. Uh, you know, usually I give them away or make find some way to use them either here in the studio or at home or whatever. But there's there are two particular gadgets I can't bear to get to to do away with. First, the the first iPhone, um, the original one. I still have that, and I I recently actually found it or. I think my sister actually I'd given it to my sister years ago and she just sent it back to me or, or, or so I can't remember exactly how I got it back but um, I think that's how it happened my sister sent it back to me and so I, I can't get rid of that I wanted to do something really geeky and cool with it like turn it into something but I asked the community and I just I, I can't think of anything that would work like I mean because it's not going to work well in itself, you know. Anyway, so I haven't really figured out what to do with that. Uh, the other thing is the Kindle. The original Kindle, I can't get rid of. I still try and use it every once in a while, although it doesn't work very well either. But I can't, I would be more into ebook reading um, if they had stuck to the original Kindle design. But the where you know e-readers are going these days, where you have access to your email, to Google Plus, to Twitter, to uh, you know the web, to, to the to the uh, um, to the web. Sorry, I don't know why I blanked on that. Um, <laughs> um, you know where where you have access to all these things. I think it's a stupid move. Just e-readers in general now, because. I want, if I'm reading, I want to be able to just concentrate on reading. I don't want to be distracted by email and Twitter because I will get distracted by them. And I think a lot of people are the same, so I'm not really sure. Uh, you know, I, I get the whole convergence idea, but in the e reader, I don't want it personally. Well, and I'm, I'm with you there because, like, if I sit down to read a book, um, the, the first thing that happens is I'll get started, I'm in two paragraphs, and then all of a sudden here's your answer that. <laughs> it's yeah. like the whole squirrel thing, you know? Yeah, <laughs> so exactly. Then we're off into this, this rabbit hole. And, yep, exactly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, so Jim Rapond, I think I'm saying that correctly, I, um, he wants to know what gadget have you been so excited about that you could not decide who will get to review it and hopefully keep it on their desk because uh, we've all seen how that goes. <laughs> Everybody's dibs, dibs, dibs on everything. <laughs>
Okay. All right. So yeah, I'm gonna have a yeah, yeah, I'm gonna have a nice conversation with Comcast when this is done. They they actually showed up about 20 minutes before I was ready to do this because they said oh. four hours. Well, I was like, there's no way I can do this right now because they're gonna want to unplug my internet and all that. So uh, I think I'm gonna call them as soon as it's done, get them out again today because this is ridiculous. This this is the first time this has ever happened to me, by the way, on Hangout. So oh, I'm sorry. Well, I think we uh, yeah, were finished it's all with good. that last I'm question. I'm sorry for you. <laughs> oh, no worries. I'm having fun talking to the chat room. <laughs> okay, awesome. So, yeah, then I guess that's... Uh, I only had one more question if you want to answer that, and then we can go ahead and, and uh, call it a day. Okay. So David Bailey wanted to know, how hard is it for you to put the technology down and not use it for an extended period of time? And I guess you already covered that. Um, so. yeah. yeah, I don't think there's anything more you know, to add on that, but uh, yeah, it's, it's hard. <laughs> <Nope>. <laughs> All right, well then, everybody, thank you so much. And, and Callie, thank you. And, and we're going to be uh, doing these. We got John next time, and then yes. uh, Moritz. And I, can, I, I have trouble with Moritz. I think it's just Tuxdorf. I, I talked. Uh, I'd have to look at it again, but uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Moritz. Everybody just knows him by Moritz. <laughs> yeah, Moritz. But for those of you who don't know, he's actually the guy. Yeah, exactly. And he's the guy that uh, created the the Hangout toolbox here in Hangout. So uh, I'm really looking forward to that interview as well. So uh, so John will be next time. So yeah, thanks everybody, and so sorry for the technical difficulty. Culties. <laughs> look look and forward you, to uh, everything will be fixed and look forward to more guys. Thank you, David. Yep, so on to Comcast, but thank you everybody.